Okay. I want to tell you a story because I think there's a lot of people on the fence about this watch like I was. I want to tell you a story of why it took me three years to finally come around to the Santos Medium. All the reasons that I had to overcome to finally figure out that this was the right Cartier for my collection. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. So I was really saddened by the fires in Maui last month, but I was also really heartened by the kindness of the watch community because I immediately saw people on Watch Crunch auctioning off their personal watches for the relief effort. And we have managed to raise thousands of dollars since. You crunchers have big hearts, it's a fact. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've caught our watch friends like Evan from You're Terrific, Derek from the Minimon channel, praising the Santos de Cartier ad infinitum. So I'm gonna skip over the things like the bold Roman numerals printed on a shimmery silver dial with striking heat blued hands matching the blue cabochon that makes this sporty Cartier on a bracelet a crowd pleaser. But the first reason I didn't buy this watch a long time ago is my fault. See, I'm a bit of a contrarian, so if I see too many people liking the same watch, PRX, it makes my eyes roll, and my immediate instinct is to look for an alternative. And ever since I gave away my Junghans Max Bill, I've had a gap of a white dialed dress watch in my watch box. I briefly considered the Ressence Type 1. That's a stunning oil-filled modern Bauhaus masterpiece that caught my eye when I saw a video by Bowl of Salmon. He got some really stunning footage, by the way. You should check that out. But it's $10,000 and 40 millimeters, both numbers that are a little bit out of my comfort zone. But the Santos isn't cheap either at 7K. It's a major commitment. So I started to look for alternatives within the brand. I reviewed the Cartier Solar Beats at one point, which you really can't say anything bad about, right? A tank is a tank is a tank. If Jackie Onassis and Andy Warhol approve of it, who am I to argue? But it's not an exciting watch. Iconic, but a little bit boring. So then I tried the Santos Dumont, what I call the hot cousin to the regular Santos. That watch was such a looker with that somber style, the skinny polished bezel, but it was a little too pretty for me. And to get into a mechanical movement, you had to upgrade to the XL, which I just don't have the wrist for. Okay, how about vintage Cartiers? The naming conventions are a little confusing, but there was the Galbe, and before that, the Carré. Well, I ruled out the Carré because it was a little too blocky. With the Galbe, they started to kind of round the elements out a little bit, looks more modern. And the Galbe XL, I thought, was the ticket. At 32 millimeters, it was uh, two to three millimeters smaller than the Santos Medium. And I feel like it's okay to err on the smaller side with a Cartier. Being square, they wear bigger, and Cartiers are supposed to be smaller watches. Because what you don't want is a big blocky Cartier that outsizes your wrist, because then it just looks clumsy. The watch is wearing you. And you know, I actually preferred the square bezel of the older generations because that's how Cartier has had it since forever. But there's one fatal flaw to the Galbe XL. Let me direct your attention to the date window. Look at how it's placed and how it rudely cuts into the fourth hour marker and not even at a parallel angle. Stuff like this haunts my dreams. I mean, you're telling me that Cartier of all brands couldn't have executed this better? Sacre bleu! What a foolish question! So, back to the drawing board. I actually gave up. I just put this decision on the back burner, went on living my blissfully ignorant Cartier free life. I took long walks on the beach, pondering if Cartier and I, we, we just weren't meant to be. Then I got a call from my friend Andrew, who invited me to be on the Watchfinder podcast. And the topic? Integrated bracelet watches. I'll link that episode in the description, but it got me thinking more about this question, which is what even is a integrated bracelet watch? Well, after the discussion, we kind of settled that it was a watch where the case transitions smoothly into the in-link and the bracelet, a watch that was designed from the beginning to be a whole rather than two separate pieces. And that's when it clicked. 
I needed to look at the Santos as an integrated watch. See, I used to hate how Cartier ditched that square bezel, extended the top and the bottom of that high polish all the way to the bracelet, thinking that it was just some flippant, careless decision, a way to be different just to be different by some over-enthused designer. But now I realize that it actually serves a function. The function of visually merging the watch head with the bracelet. And the more I looked at the Santos this way, the more I enjoyed its integrated aesthetic. And when you wear it, you really feel that. The bracelet just melts into your wrist and everything is curved, each link, the case, even the sapphire crystal has a gentle radius to it. The case measures less than nine millimeters tall, so it still has that delicateness you expect from a Cartier, but with all of these different layers of topography and finishing on that integrated bracelet, it feels industrial still and robust. And this bracelet is an achievement of engineering with the hidden clasp and the ability to change links with nothing but your fingernail. Yeah, you don't even need like a toothpick. You just push a hidden button on certain of the links and a pin pops out. And if you get tired of this bracelet, Cartier has a quick change system that lets you pop on leather straps at the push of a button. Sure, all of this high polish on the bezel is gonna scratch, no doubt. You can now add Cartier bezel scratches to death and taxes as inevitabilities. But the bezel is actually removable via those screws and you can polish it in the future if you're that OCD, which, I probably will do. Notice I'm borrowing a lot of clips from Derek. That's because I actually bought this watch from him and couldn't be happier with my experience with Carico. So shout out to Derek. I blame you for spending my money. Send him a message on IG if you're in the market. The other misconception I used to have about Cartier as a brand is that they're not a real watchmaker. I mean, these guys are known as the jeweler to the kings, right? So I figured what is a tiara maker knows about watches. But surprisingly, the Caliber 1847 inside, I learned, is a legit movement. It's an in-house manufactured caliber. It keeps up with the competition with a four hertz beat rate, 42 hours of power. It's actually highly resistant to magnetism and the watch is rated for a stout 100 meters of water resistance. So yeah, you can wear this car to get every day if you wanted to. You'd be a fancy dandy, but good for you. So did I settle for the Santos medium or did I finally grow to appreciate this watch for what it is? I'm not sure, but what I do know is that wearing this watch over the last couple weeks, I found it to be versatile, comfortable, technically robust, and finally that I word, iconic. But are you on the fence about the Santos or do you already own it? What's your experience? Let me know your thoughts on Watch Crunch. Go download the app today and I'll see you on there.